Hey, what's up everybody? Been off for a little while. Glad to be back. Tip of the hat. What's going on everybody? Yeah, I've been I've been taking this last week or so and I've just been just disconnect from everything and I just I don't know. I've 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 been focusing on drawing and painting a bit and just doing artwork and just keeping it to myself and enjoying that and just not needing any kind of people like in my like 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 in terms of social interaction like I just don't I don't need it like I can kind of take it or leave it but anyways whatever um as far as my travel by the way shout out to Mr. Jerry Jordan Jerry Jordan is a guy he's he's donated over two thousand dollars to my GoFundMe account this guy really really believes in me I guess and thank you so much Jerry if you're watching man I, I sent you an email or I mean, I hope you got it, but yeah, so it, so, so my travel plans basically, if I want to leave the country right now, then I've got to pay off my passport. I've got to pay over a thousand bucks just to have my passport back. And then I have a, a couple thousand after that. So if I want to leave the country, I'm not really going to have enough still because I'll, I'll only have about $2,500 from that GoFundMe to travel with, and that's still not enough. So what I'm thinking now is I have an opportunity to move to Portland, Oregon, which I've lived there before. And Portland's a great town because it's very art-centered. There's a lot of open-minded, like, very intelligent people there. But there's also a lot of fucking, like, left-wing fucking nut jobs there who talk about microaggressions and you know, that, that, that I should be ashamed for being a white man, basically. You, you, you've also got crazy motherfuckers like that there too, but I've got family there. I've lived there before. Um, it's got a decent scene there and I figured I can move there for a bit and get a job and make money the way I want to. Cause there's no opportunity here where I live, dude. It's, it sucks out here. There's nothing here, dude. It's bum fuck. And if I move to Portland, then I could, uh, make some more money and then plan my tra you know my next move traveling so let me know what you guys think about that shout out to all my portland fans let me get to the fucking point now i have an email from curious kim Let's see what we got here all right hey howard how's it going kim here from singapore i want to ask man because i'm heading to pp in a week pp is phnom penh and i'm planning to get fucked up on shrooms and e any advice on how to acquire them? Uh, and also, can the happy pizzas there be taken away? Because I prefer to eat in my hotel room as compared to in public. All the best, Kim. Kim from Singapore wants to go to Phnom Penh in the next few days and get fucked up on mushrooms and ecstasy. Well, let's talk about this. So let's talk about drugs in Phnom Penh. Let's talk about where to get them and blah, 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 blah. Because I know a lot of people watching, they... They watch me because I lived in Cambodia for two years. Yes, I did get into the drug scene in, in Phnom Penh. Um, not so much in clubs, more more so in just by myself, just in my own apartment or just at parties or whatever. But anyway, so in terms of mushrooms, getting shrooms in Cambodia, can you get shrooms in Cambodia? Yeah, you can, but... It's always, you know, is is the guy in town, is it the season, whatever. There's a place in Phnom Penh, and I don't give a fuck about saying names. Like, like I'm trying to help people out. I don't care. In fact, I'm helping people get business. There's a place in Lakeside called Lost and Found. It is a, I want to say, guest house or some kind of bar. It's called Lost and Found. And apparently there you can just go and ask if they have anything the guy sometimes has mushrooms or acid or whatever but typically just strong pot you you can get it lost and found and uh if you go to um number 10 lakeside guest house that's number 10 lakeside guest house you can get any kind of pot you want and they usually have um heroin and coke and meth and you just you just ask around there um now i did get mushrooms one time in cambodia when when I live with my ex-roommates in Phnom Penh, we used to do these ayahuasca ceremonies where people like other expats from Thailand and Cambodia and Vietnam would come to our house in Phnom Penh and we would do uh, ayahuasca ceremonies for them. And this one girl who was living in Kampot at the time, this English girl, she brought like nine grams of cubensis mushrooms, 
but it was just caps and they were so old and dry and dude there was literally a worm crawling in the bag of mushroom it was not good i ate three and a half grams of the of these mushrooms nothing happened and i've had mushrooms since then and three and a half grams is more than enough to take you to the fucking oort cloud the outer reaches of our solar system man trust me um so in terms of getting shrooms in phnom penh or cambodia not gonna happen probably not very re reliable uh, there, there's there's no there's no shroom dealers and any tuk tuk that says that they can get you shrooms probably don't know what the fuck they're doing because they just that's not a drug that's very popular in Cambodia except for other foreigners and it's hard to find them there now acid um, I'm not gonna say any I'm not gonna try to get anybody in trouble but but I did have a very good acid connection very strong acid from the Netherlands when I was in Phnom Penh ask around. Uh, I'm not going to say any names or anything, but the acid in Phnom Penh is good. I did get gypped a few times. Definitely happened. Um, obviously, just look at your acid before you buy it. If you buy a blotter tab with nothing, it's just a white little tab. Obviously, don't buy it. It needs to have like uh, some kind of um, like brown or yellow smudge on it. That, that lets you know that the acid's on there. Um, so shrooms and acid, yeah. Is Now, this person wants to do ecstasy. Ecstasy, now they, they, they do have lots of MDMA in Phnom Penh, which is essentially ecstasy, pretty much. It's not exactly the same thing, but if you want to get MDMA, you can ask tuk-tuk drivers, which again, is I never suggest that, that you ask tuk-tuk drivers for drugs, unless it's your absolute last resort and you're just dying to get high. Um, Luckily for me, when I lived in Phnom Penh, I, I, I had a legitimate uh, source. I, I, I had like a reliable source. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about that on the video, but if you do want to get Phnom Penh, your best, uh, I'm sorry, if you do want to get MDMA in Phnom Penh, pardon me, your, your, your best option is to uh, go to clubs like Pontoon, Heart of Darkness, Reggae Rooftop, whatever other, like... I was never a club guy in Phnom Penh. I was more of like a house party guy or just do drugs by yourself type of dude. Um, but asking around clubs would be your best bet. And a bomb of MDMA, like a good dose, like to put in your drink to fuck you up for like pretty much the whole night will be about 15 to 20 bucks. Um, ketamine was my favorite drug to do in Cambodia. And I won't spend a whole lot of time. It's very simple. There are, uh, there are a couple of pharmacies that sell liquid ketamine in Phnom Penh, um, mainly around the Sak Kendal area. And I'm not going to talk too much about it in the video. You, you got you guys can ask around and do your own independent research. But from what I understand, there may or may not be a pharmacy uh, in the Sak Kendal area that sells liquid ketamine that you can cook into powder yourself or inject into your muscles and veins. And uh, that that that's the most direct way to get ketamine. Uh, to that, that's your high highest bio availability uh, for ketamine is to inject it into your muscle and or vein. But you should do it to your muscle because if you do it to your vein, it's gonna it's gonna hit you too hard too fast, and you're not gonna have enough time to get comfortable. So if you are gonna inject ketamine, shoot it into your muscle. I prefer just to snort it, like cook it into a crystal, snort it. Um, what you can do with any other kind of liquid drug really now they want to talk about happy pizza I I know a lot about it and I'm just gonna talk about it real quick um, they want to know if they can get takeaway like go in and take it back to your apartment yes you can but what I prefer to do is I would just call the pink elephant the pink elephant is was my go-to spot for happy shakes and weed and all that that's called the pink elephant and they deliver you just call them up and they will deliver to your house. I used to have them deliver all the time. I lived in the Russian market area, which is kind of far from the riverside, and they would bring it down. And I, if, if I wanted a bag of pot, if I wanted happy shakes, happy pizza, all in the same time, they would bring it. And I would tip them a couple bucks. You don't even have to, but I did. And there you go. So problem solved. So happy pizza is the way to go. Um, I, I prefer happy shakes because you can get just as fucked up without having to eat a whole pizza. Right, like who the fuck wants to eat a whole pizza? Just, I mean, maybe, maybe after you get fucked up on happy pizza, you want to eat a whole one. But just, just get a shake for a couple bucks. 
A normal fruit shake at Pink Elephant is $1.50. If you want one dose of happy, if you want one dose of pot, it's 50 cents, so $2. If you want a 2x happy shake, it's $2.50. If you want a 3x happy shake, it's $3. I suggest you start with a 1x. Trust me, dude. If you think you can go further out, get a 2 or 3x. Fuck it. Um, yeah, but that but that's pretty much my advice on getting drugs in Phnom Penh. I mean, if you want to get things like coke and meth and heroin, like I never really did a whole bunch of that, but I know that a lot of the clubs will have that. Um, and there are reliable sources there, but you just have to ask around. Um, if you want to do opium, for example, opium is anywhere from 20 to $30 per gram. Like Red Rock Opium is about $20 a gram, like 15 to 20 and Black Tar Opium is $30 a gram. Um, last time I checked. So hope you guys, uh, if, if you are going to go to Phnom Penh to do drugs, which a lot of people do, um, I, I just want you guys to do it responsibly and safely. I mean, I'm all for drug use because cause, cause, cause people are going to get fucked up and do drugs either way. So if you guys are going to do it, do it safely. Um, avoid asking for drugs in like tourist spots where there's clearly a lot of other foreigners around because there are undercover cops waiting for some stupid foreigner to buy drugs. It's best to do it, you know, not, you know, just be a little more discreet about it. And if you do want to go to a pharmacy there, most pharmacies sell things like opiates and ketamine anyway, especially opiates and benzos. Like if you want to get, you know, anything like codeine, morphine, oxy, any of that shit, they sell at most pharmacies, especially uh, codeine and like tramadol and um, Vicodin and shit like that. Like oxy is not everywhere, but most places. But if you are going to go, go to Phnom Penh and be a fucking drug addict, at least, at least be smart about it. Uh, watch my channel, No Joe Coward. I've got good info on drugs. Type in No Joe Coward drugs, and you guys will find a bunch of videos that I talked about. You know where I talk about drugs in Phnom Penh. So, anyways, guys, I'm done rambling now. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, check me out if you guys want to like my Facebook page, Facebook.com/slash No Joe Coward. Instagram at Brayton Howard. You guys can check out my latest artwork and just uh, just post pictures of my life and all that. So, hope you guys. Take it easy. You guys all enjoy your day. Peace.